Well, with this, um, you can undo it and roll it up manually, but it takes time. And also, if you really want to make it as small as possible to pack away. The little device that I use, which I've showed in a few videos before, is just a battery operated air pump, as it says there. And when I transport it, I've put um, a yellow label on one battery, and I just turn that around, put it back in, so it doesn't accidentally turn on and off. That's how I do that, if you haven't seen the other video where I've used it before. And it comes to this, which is just an adapter, which will fit in there. The best thing about it is you've got a deflate and inflate. So I put it on to deflate, and it just does it a whole lot quicker. Oh, and yeah, it can naturally go down, but... Job done. And there it is, believe it or not, that's that huge, great big mattress. With all the air sucked out of it. It's pretty much the same sort of size, maybe even a bit smaller than um, a self-inflating mattress, which you would probably clip underneath your Bergen, for example. So for the height and the, the, um, the airspace underneath you to really insulate you off the ground, it's 10 pounds, maybe less if you're lucky, from Tesco's. And um, why wouldn't you? Yeah, people can laugh at you if you've got an ego problem. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. The important thing is, is to have a good night's sleep. It doesn't care what you look like. It doesn't matter. I've slept like a baby on this, and I've slept like a bitch on those little foam mats and the little self-inflating mats that are about, I don't know, an inch thick. These are bloody mustard, mate. They're really cool. Well, we got here the Maxac, kindly given to me by K Jumper One. My well, buddy from across the pond in North Carolina. These are so good. No bullshit. You get stuff sacks and, and whatnot and dry bags. This this is just wicked. One of the things that sets them apart from most, you do your standard, you roll it all up, blah 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 blah. And then you got loads of air in there. Which is a good thing because it keeps the air in there. So for a flotation device, if you had to cross the river, for example, or just generally weight something above the water surface, that's ideal. And all you want to do is you squeeze the air out. It's like a number term valve. It just pushes the air through there and it just compresses. It's an amazing piece of kit. Just love it. So it compresses right down. And you can just keep rolling her up to get her nice and small. So I'm a big fan of compressing stuff down because you can take so much more than you would have thought. You just need something that will make it nice and small. <laughs> the Maxac. It's a top piece of kit, it really is. Highly recommended. I've only used this for today and I just know. Completely waterproof, even with the uh, the exertion valve, for want of a better term, the purge valve, I think they call it. You can just dunk that completely under the water in a bath, put it out, everything will be dry inside. Nice one. I don't know how many people have come across these yet, but these have just um, hit the UK in Tesco stores. <laughs> you know, I've got a bit of an addiction for um, tropical Skittles. Well, these just trump that in a big way. <laughs> it's really, really cool. The name is a bit, um, a bit naughty at the moment because of what's going on um, overseas. But it's called Tropical Typhoon. But the flavours, you check out the flavours on there. And it's all made from real fruit juice. It's fine. I've got a few packs of these. There was an offer. I think there was £1.80 a box, down from £2.00. So they're a lot of money for what they are. But obviously they're imported from America and what happens is because it comes into the UK the label goes over the top which I'm against really because um, what I've noticed on American products is you get the, um, the nutritional values of the actual box or the packet. In the UK everything's got to be done by 100 grams or whatever. It's complete bullshit. It confuses people. People eat more than they need and they end up being fat and stupid. So... I like the American idea with um, it tells you what's in the package so you know. You ain't got to do no working out and bullshit and weights. 
So, let's just get this bad boy open. That's what you look like. The candy man. Oh wow. It's like um jelly bellies. Really intense flavours with um real fruit juice. So if anyone can um get hold of these, go for it because well recommend these, they're lovely. Loads of energy as well to um give you a little um sugar hits for the day. Now what I tend to do when I'm overnight camping, when I come away, is I always put S beaners on my kit, always. I've got two on there, one there, one there, which has got um, another camera for photographs, spare batteries, a hip flask. It just hangs on there nice and safe. And I've got my main one there. I can either hang that onto a tree or something, or my EDC keychain, which I've got there. And to stop anything getting lost, it just gets clipped on there. It's not going to be in your pocket and everything else. It's all good to go. Got all sorts on there. Just keeps it nice and safe. Been using that this weekend to batten loads of wood because um, it's been really damp, as I said earlier, with the humidity and such. So to get to the dry stuff, you just lose the outside stuff. And um, battening with a Glock, Martindale. Just absolutely spot on. Scott from Wessex Blades put the convex edge on there um, a long time ago, um, January last year now. Um, he still does these edges for the Glocks, modifies them, but I think he, he backs them up probably about to there now rather than down there. So they're really lean and they bite every time you whack that into a log and it stays in there. With this one, it's a more shallower convex grind. As always, always put a hand lanyard at the end. Now what I do, for those of you who don't know, you've got a piece of paracord like that, nice and simple. And all you do is you just move your hand over like that and grip. That's basically it. If you want to do it tighter, just do your hand a couple of times and then go around and it makes it tighter onto you. With or without gloves, doesn't really matter. And also when you do batten, say if the material going through is about that thick, try and get it about there. You don't want to do it there and batten it because that would go up. It's just a nightmare. And you don't want to be hitting anything around here because the vibration will transmit through the blade into your hand and your hand will be numb and horrible. You want to do all your hitting when you're doing battening in the last quarter of the blade right at the end. Don't hit it there or there or there. Right at this piece, that's where you do your hitting. Just stops all the vibration shocks going through your hand. And obviously some of you haven't seen this before. Uh, my dear friend Scott over at Wessex Blades made me this amazing sheath. And robust. Just doesn't cut it really. It's an amazing tool for being out in the woods. And it's really nice and secure as well. It's just not going to go nowhere. And also on the other side, you've got the Mantis, which is a little companion blade. And you can see how lovely and shiny that is. Sir Bruce Nebulex123 um, done that for me. At the kindness of his heart, a true gentleman. And that is so sharp. It really is. You can actually shave the hairs on your arm with not too much effort. And just shing, shing, just cuts the hairs. Just pops them straight off. And with both of these, I've just um, put a couple of bits of paracord in so you can grab them out quick. Same with the file on the end there. And that's um, a genuine crocodile Martindale file. Now the idea behind this, dual purpose obviously, you can sharpen the blade of it. And you can also use the rough angle on the edge there to strike some flint and get some sparks. Put it with all sorts of um, material that you can think of really. Birch bark shavings, mire dust, chaga, the list just goes on and on and on. And to top it all off, he made this as well. It pops off. There's a ferro rod. Moulded into the leather stock there. 
and it's a nice generous piece of ferro rod too. It's just it's an all-in-one unit and it really goes in there nice and easy and goes down no faffing around it just slide clink clink done. So thanks to Scott from Wessex Blades for making that beautiful sheath. I don't know if you can see it but there's his little logo there. Scott really is a true gent of a guy. And also some of you are probably wondering what's that jacket got in here? I've had this over a year now and I must say if you want a jacket that will keep the elements out if it's like really really cold this is for you. It's so strong and tough. Um, PM Jedi and ask him, he's just tried it on and he's well impressed. With the um, the cuffs, they sort of double inside themselves to keep all of the wind out. And also you can really keep the wind out even more by using a Velcro strap. This is all in one unit. You can just wear a t-shirt underneath and just this, and believe you me, I've walked around in minus three with this. T-shirt and just this on, totally nice and warm. No exaggeration, it's so thick and strong. It's a Slovakian, hence the badge there. If you know Gavko from the States, from New York, who does all the knives. That's his birth country from Slovakia. It's a Slovakian army issue, woodland camo bomber parker. How we know it as. And you've got a little zip around the collar bit there, which a huge big Arctic hood goes over, which comes out about there. It's massive, really keeps the elements out. And you've got pockets all over it really, inside and out. You've got a heavy, heavy duty zip there, and Velcro bits. Uh, a friend of mine selling these, I don't know how many he's got left, but what I'll do, um, I'll ask him to see how many he's got because quite a few people have been asking me where I'll get these from. And the guy's got them, but he's just trying to get them from the guy to the people who want them. So if anyone's interested, PM me and I will have a chat with a guy. I think they're not very expensive. I think they're around 20, 30 quid, something like that. I'm not really sure. And they also come in the, um, the two-tone desert color as well. Very light color and like a greeny pattern all over it. Very nice and it's great for the winter time. As I say, what I do with this is I actually like roll it up, put it in a stuff sack, back of the truck. So if it is snowing and you break down or whatever and you get outside to dig the snow away or whatever you need to do, this really will keep you warm and I'm not exaggerating. I wouldn't tell you guys bullshit, you know me by now. And I only recommend stuff that I really believe in. So, uh, yeah, if anyone wants this, just give me a PM and we see what we can do.